I agree that the children of Israel is a bloodline, but it's not everybody with melanated skin is the children of Israel. There is a difference. For instance, the Africans have melanated skin, but they're not the children of Israel. Do you believe in the Bible at all? Then how in the world do you even have a thought or a clue of who Israel is? Selling Africans, they understand it's a difference. But what the so-called white man has done is called confusion of faces, right? What what the so-called white man has done is called confusion of faces to the point. Right. So he he has made us to think that we are Africans, so that we'll start following other guys, thinking we're Egyptians. So you'll find people that wear stuff like the Egyptian up thinking that we Egyptians. But God said he put a difference between that. We're not Egyptians. We're actually greater than them. He actually destroyed them for us. Them as a ransom for us. How could we be the same people if he destroyed them in order to save us? That make no difference. I mean, make no sense, right? Watch this. Read. Exodus chapter 11 verse, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel. So against any of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? So not a dog move his tongue. No other nation should speak. Because a, a literal dog doesn't talk, right? So he's calling the other nations the dog, right? Said so they do not do what? Move his tongue against man or beast. That ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. He put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Right. Let's see what kind of difference he did. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. What kind of difference did he make between the Egyptians and the children of Israel? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. He's saying that God said that you are holy, meaning set apart. He separated you from the other nations, right? Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He did what? Hath chosen thee. In order for you to choose, that means you had other options, right? Just like, for instance, you chose to wear that hat today. You chose to put on those shoes today. You chose to wear that outfit today. God chose the children of Israel for what? To be a special people. If they special, then that means you feel a little different about them than everybody else, right? How special are they? Unto himself, uh -huh. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Y'all hear that over there? The Most High God said the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, He chose them to be a special people unto Himself. That's right. Above all other nations on the planet Earth. That's right. That's right. That means, Black man, you are considered to be a God. Right. Sister, you are a princess of God. Right. We have to come back to living like that. That's right. How do we do that? By first accepting that we're the children of Israel. That's right. That you're not Black. You're not African American. You're not Jamaican, Haitian, Cuban, Puerto Rican. Those are demeanor. Those are what's the word I'm looking for? Derogatory. By, uh, derogatory. That's what I wanted. Derogatory. God called them by words. Those are names outside of your God-given name. Right. It's no different from somebody calling you a nigga and pissing on you. Right. That's disrespectful. So for you to be called black, African American. Puerto Rican, that's disrespectful. Right. Would God put his name on your name? Right. That's what Israel is. That L is God in your name. Right. That's your power. Right. We have to learn how to tap back into that power. Right. What is our power? You mean, hold on, read that first. Read. read. No, 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 no. Read that first. Genesis chapter 32, verse 27. You know. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. What's what's aggravating my spirit right now is because we just heard a Christian pastor reading about this. Right. Talking about Jacob was wrestling with this man and 
And he was like, hold on, you got to bless me. And I ain't, I ain't give no understanding to the point that this, this guy, Jacob, is actually the forefather of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. What he did when he was wrestling with that angel, he did say, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. But let's see what that blessing is and who that blessing belongs to. Read. And he said... Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, Come on. but Israel. Read. For as a prince has thou power with God. The blessing that we got was power with the Most High God. Right. That name went from him to his descendants, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of the day. Right. Right. That power, what does that power translate into today? Give me Romans 1 and 16. What does that power translate into today? How do we tap into the power that we was given to? Right. I'm going to tell you one thing for sure. Calling yourself black, African-American is nowhere near powerful. That's right. In fact, they give you the name black because of the definition. When you look it up, it means death, something low, something bad. That's playing on the psychological mind. Right. God said you're Israel, a prince, a prince's royalty. God said you are royalty and you have power through his name. Read this. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. On, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Contrary to popular belief, Christ was a man that walked this earth, and he was not a so-called white man. Yes. He actually looked like you, black man, in the back seat. Christ, yes. Jesus Christ, and you should not be ashamed of that, because he go through the same bloodline as you read. Right. For it is the power of God. What? It is the power of God. Your power is understanding that a so-called black man walked this earth and he died so that you can have repentance, right. so that you can come back to your God-like man's mentality, so that you can be here teaching your people how to tap into this power. Right. That power starts in your repentance. One of the things you must do, for instance, what's that on? What's that around your neck? What's that? What does it represent? I can barely hear you, bro. I know it's terrible to understand. I'm a, I'm a really well word. So tell me why you wear it. That's, that's what I'm... We, we dialoguing. I ain't attacking you in no way. We dialoguing. I'm, right. I'm here to help my people. You right. understand? Right. I understand the mentality of the things that we that, that our people go through. Right. Guess what? We was all on that side too, bro. Right. All of us. Yeah, I've been through a lot. I mean, this one right here, about 20 years ago, yeah. hit on car accident. You know what I'm saying? Damn. She broke both her arms. Alright, so so to you this is a symbol of what? This right here. Huh? It's hip hop. So, so technically, it means nothing to you. So now, all right. So, so check this out, right? You got a cross. It got a man hanging on the cross, right? Who's the man supposed to be? Jesus Christ. All right, so let's say you had an uncle named Todd. Your uncle named Todd got hung by a noose on a tree. Are you gonna wear a noose with a man on it around your neck? Listen, listen to me, listen to me. Just, just listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I need you to understand what's going on. Now I heard you say all of the stuff that you went through. Hold on, sis. I gotta go clock back in. I work from home. Okay. I saw y'all and I was like, let me go get some. Okay, all praise to the Father. Listen. Don't call yourself black no more. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah if your father is a so-called black man. That's Whatever right. your father is, that's what you is. On the back of that fly, you see all of the lists of the names. Guess what? Even if you don't know your father, if your spirit bears witness with the, with the curses in this Bible, then you are the children of Israel, okay? Now, back to you, Mr. Michael, right? Mike, right? Yeah, I have a so, name. now here you say you went through all of that, you know what I'm saying, traumatized you, right? So, to me... Where you was going with that is 
that got somewhat of a connection to it, that cross. Because to you, your thought was you was looking for God in that, right? When all that happened to you, you was looking for God, right? Right? You was looking for God in the midst of that, right? Guess what? That always happens. When we go through stuff, we always looking for God in the midst of it. Listen up. You don't need no cigars, bro. You don't need it. You don't need it. Smoke weed got me walking again. Listen to me. You don't need it. I worry about weed. I'm not going to walk around. Instead of them giving him those medications, like, he's just going to I feel you. There's <laughs> other. Listen to, me, listen to me, bro. There's there's other other things that you could do outside of weed that can help you. I'm telling you, the stuff that they have nowadays is altered. It's not what what originally been on this earth. There's other things that you could do. They it, they didn't do that. You think they legalized it? As a as a as something to help you, listen to me. They used to listen, bro. No, hold up. They used to use cocaine for pain. So if they legalize cocaine, you think you think that that is is here to help you? No, that's not what it's for. What I'm telling you is, I understand. People get prescribed it. They say they they say it helps them. All of that stuff. But guess what? It's not purpose for that. To the instance, what what you what you what our people do it for now? We they claim. Demonize, but, uh, go, you know what I'm saying? Before, before we demonize, realize it, it's just like, it's just like, um, like a rose. You know what I mean? We've demonized everyone. Everyone is like that. You know what I mean? We've demonized it. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm telling you, you don't need that shit. You don't need it. Hey, well, what, what did Jesus do? When was coming, when they was about to come kill Jesus. Well, he didn't smoke a blunt. Well, no, 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 but they, they drank wine. What's he didn't smoke weed. Well, what was the first miracle on Jesus on did? He, he turned water into wine. But he didn't do it to alter his. He didn't listen. He didn't do it to hide pain. And he didn't do it to alter his his mentality. So you telling me you do it for what? So you do it for inspiration. That's what you're saying. That's not according to God. I'm telling you, bro, like, like, it's nothing you can really say that's going to make what you say right against what the scriptures say. We'll find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Psalm chapter 104, verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and earth for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Earth's what meant for you to smoke. Now, people say oh okay well it's edibles i can have edibles but guess what they still doing it to the point where they adding this extra stuff chemicals i ain't gonna go into it i know about it but i ain't gonna go into it they adding all these different chemicals to it to alter what it does that's not what it's for what i'm telling you is bro there's other ways to get inspired you don't have to smoke weed to be inspired to do stuff right we got many musicians out here they don't need weed to be inspired to do a song or a track or the right stuff. You can say you're the best. No, you ain't the best if you need weed to do it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Here you, go. Here you, go. you just said you did. I said, dear Lord, if it's okay, I'd like to express the talents you've given me. My father, I'm blessed. I confess you're the one. God, the Listen to me. Son. I've seen your many powers. I know what you've done. Where so I'm from, it's pretty evil. Everyone has a struggle. I got this struggle for a thousand men. Lord, you're my muscle. I must go for the pain to realize the power. Bro. I almost fell to the devil. I don't know. All right, that sounds good. So listen, listen, okay. All right, listen. That's, that sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds great. I, I understand. You didn't finish it. All praises. It's cool. Listen, it sounds good. You don't need, just like you ain't need weed to recite it after it been wrote, you don't need it for inspiration. Your inspiration should come from here. Right. Your addiction should be to this. Right. This is what you need to do. It is. It is. It is. Leave it alone, bro. Well, marijuana? Yes. Yo, I said, what we got? I did a song, you know, Bone Thugs I did a song, Bone Thugs Up. Watch this, watch this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen up, listen up. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, that you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, 
and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry. Your first addiction to, should be to this ministry. What is this ministry about? It's about teaching black men like you how to be gods on this earth. That's what it's about. Because technically, we ain't black. That's disrespectful as hell. We the children of Israel, the greatest people ever walked the planet earth. That's and you don't need no damn weed to solidify that. You don't need to get drunk to solidify that. God himself solidified that. How did he do it? Because he put us on slave ships. He said that the children of Israel, if they break the commandments, they're going to go into slavery by way of ship. Right. This is a punishment for what we did. He also said that if we come back to keeping the commandments, the people that did this, they're going to be judged for it. Simple. I'll give you one right now. First Corinthians. Bring it out. There's a lot of commandments. A whole lot of them. A lot of people say we can't do all that, but yet they stop at a stop sign. They stop for a red light. Bring it out. They don't go past 45 when they see a sign say 45. The they don't steal at the store. They don't shoot somebody because they're worried about people like this coming to put them in chains. So it's it's over 600. That's what they say. It's a lot of them, right? So you say, well, how in the heck I'm gonna keep all of them? First and foremost, you gotta learn them. Here's one. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of the man is Christ, meaning there's there's a hierarchy, someone he has to answer to. He answers to Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The woman has to answer to the man that's under Christ. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And Christ has to answer to God the Father, the Creator. Hold fast. Hold your question. Don't lose it now. Read. Every man praying or prophesying. If a man is in the midst of prayer or prophecy. Having his head covered. And his head is covered. Read. Dishonoreth his head. He dishonor Christ. Read. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered. And if the woman has her head uncovered. Right. Dishonored her head. She dishonored the man that Christ and God set over her. So would you willingly have a woman disrespect you? You would not. This is so for instance, there is rulership, there's hierarchy. Yes, we are gods, right? Bring it out. So for instance. For you to say, if I'm a God, how can I have someone over me? That means you created yourself. Did you? You did not. So, so how, so then explain what you mean by that then. Okay. Well, I think maybe what you're trying to say is, the Bible's full of a lot of interpretations. Uh, maybe instead of a person or being itself, maybe it's talking about a certain level of consciousness. So what do you believe? Right. Uh, you believe in consciousness. That what you said? So you, you don't believe in anything. So, all right. For instance, did 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 you did you get in a car, or did you walk to the store? You, okay, you got in your car and you came to the store. You believed that if you got in that car, it would get you to the store, right? So it's a di what's the difference between belief and knowing? Not according to God. Okay. I got you. I got you. Now, now, do you know or do you believe that this happened to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? It happened, but I do know for a fact that it didn't happen the way that they tell us. Like what? That the tribes of Israel, the blood, which you speak of, which you guys are a part of, which you all are a part of. So you believe you're Israel? So, what what thing? I just before we skip past it, you do believe that you from the children of Israel. That's what you said. I know that I'm 
I'm sorry, you know that you're the children of Israel, right? So, now, how do you know that you're the children of Israel? I don't like it being said like that because it means bloodline. That's where the interpretation comes in. That's where the confusion comes in. I, that's not that's not what I'm asking. Huh? I'm not asking you about interpretation and confusion. You said you know that you're Israel, so I'm asking you, how do you know that you're Israel? Genetics. Genetics. Yeah. Genetics and bloodline. Simply melanated skin. Melanated skin. So then that would mean that anybody with melanated skin is other children of Israel. That is false. That is false. Yes, I agree that the children of Israel is a bloodline, but it's not everybody with melanated skin is the children of Israel. There is a difference. For instance, the Africans have melanated skin, but they're not the children of Israel. Do you believe in the Bible at all? Then how in the world do you even have a thought or a clue of who Israel is? How do I have a thought or a clue? Exactly. Uh, how do you know that Israel exists? Excuse me. Well, when you go back into the teachings of, um, first of all, study the uh, 42 laws of my God, which your commandments come from. No, it doesn't. Um, when you go back to the teachings of ancient Egypt, which all this stuff derives from, it does it not. Be proven because the Bible, matter of fact, there's many books that predate the Bible. And I mean, common sense no, it doesn't. tell you that. Come on, bro. Yes, it does. It does. A common practice back in the day was called typology, in which two books were created. And if you go to your Torah, you go to your Quran, you go to your Bible, mm. they all have similar teachings. So, different names. It's called typology. It's the same thing in all three books. Now, common sense will tell you. So, what's up, Bob? So, according to these scriptures, that is not just what we believe, but what we know is true, right? It documents where the ancient Egyptians even got any of that knowledge from. Let's find out according to God. Psalm chapter 105, verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was. You cannot believe in the Egyptians and don't. Uh, you can't know that the Egyptians existed without knowing that Joseph existed. Read. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. Come on. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house. And ruler over all his substance. What we're reading about is the history of how Joseph got sold to the Egyptians. The Egyptians end up making him ruler over the house, second in command over all of the stuff he knew because of the knowledge that he had. Read. To bind his princes at his pleasure. Come on. And teach his sen senators wisdom. He taught them what? Wisdom. So the, the wisdom that the Egyptians end up having came from who? It came from Joseph. That's, That's right. right. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.